Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google+. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for Tuesday, March 15, 2016, around 7.35 in the morning in Bellica, Massachusetts. Raining like cats and dogs right now. Later on today, maybe some rain showers. Highs in the mid 40s, and later on in the week's going to be 60 again. Monday could be a potential of a snowstorm. Winter's not over, and I still think there could be a snowstorm. We need to, because we, we won't get off scotch free for the winter. Um, March could come out like a lion. Some news to report the first four of the NCAA men's basketball tournament starts tonight on in Dayton, Ohio. Catch the games on True TV. It's also the eyes of March today. And Danny DeVito, actor, is supporting Bernie Sanders as president of the United States. And that's about it on the news. My first video blog subject of the day is a continuation of the top 50 greatest heels in professional wrestling history today. Well, this blog will be about 20 to 11. And here they are, number 20 on this list of the greatest professional wrestling heels of all time. Michael P.S. Hayes, the leader of the fabulous Freebird. It's Michael P.S. Hayes was a awesome heel. He was a good talker, a decent wrestler. He blinded the junkyard dog with shaving cream in 1980 and eventually had a long running feud with the Von Erich family and he was an underrated heel announcer in the UWF and WCW. Going into the Hall of Fame this year for the WWE as part of the fabulous Freebirds. Number 19 on this list of the greatest professional wrestling heels of all time, the Outsiders. Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, part of the NWO. The Outsiders won many WCW World Tag Team Championships. They just beat up on wrestlers. And Kevin Nash's famous quote was, Too sweet! And then number 19. Number 18 on this list of the greatest professional wrestling heels of all time. Greg the Hammer Valentine. Greg was a second generation wrestler. His father, Johnny Valentine, was an awesome wrestler in the 1950s and 60s. Greg the Hammer, um, Valentine, broke um, Chief Wahoo McDaniel's leg, and he did the same thing to wa wa I mean, Chief J. Strong belt ball, and he destroyed Roddy Roddy Piper's ear and Tio Santana's knee, and he won many championships, including the U.S. Tag Team Champ, the U.S. Tag Team Titles with Terry Taylor, the U.S title, the Intercontinental title, and the NWA World Tag Team Championships with Rick Major Boy Ric Flair, 2004 WWE Hall of Famer. Number 17 on this list of the greatest professional wrestling heels of all time, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Piper was famous for Piper's Pit, hitting the coconut on Jimmy Superfly Snooker, also had a long running field with with Hulk Hogan of the WWE title, Paul Mr. Wonderful Orndorff, he boxed Mr. T at WrestleMania 2. Eventually he turned face, but he's known for his heel work in in the early 80s for the WWE. 2005, um, WWE Hall of Famer just passed away last year. Number 16 on this list of the greatest professional wrestling heels of all time, Bobby the Brain Heenan. Bobby the Brain Heenan was a longtime wrestling manager in AWA and WWE, mainly managing Nick Bach, Winkle, plus he managed a lot of other wrestlers, Ken Patera, Big John Stagg, King Kong Bundy, Andre the Giant, Ravishing Rick Rude, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning, and others. He was nicknamed the Weasel, and he also like got involved in many matches, which eventually were Weasel Suit matches. 2004 WWE Hall of Famer, and Bobby the Brain Heenan still hanging in it there, despite having bouts of cancer, which you know made him a shell of his former self. It's it's real sad to see what you know cancer could do to a person, and. It, hit Bobby the Brain he in hard, but he still get, goes out there and goes to conventions, but the sight of him is just so, so sad. Number 15 on this list of the greatest professional wrestling heroes of all time, 
Ray, the Clip Crippler Stevens. Ray was a big time star in San Francisco in the AWA and the WWE. He's known for pile driving Jimmy Superfly Snooker on uh, on the cement floor twice in WWE television 1982. He he formed a long time tag team with Nick Barkwinkle winning some AWA World Tag Team titles and also Pat Patterson for some AWA World Tag Team titles. Wait a couple of Stevens passed away 20 years ago and he's never been inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame posthumously. He should one of these days. Number 14 on this list of the greatest professional wrestling heels of all time. Holly Race, the seven time NWA world champion. Holly Race was like a calculating heel. One of the best heels of all time. Probably a great NWA world champion. Then when he went to the WWE, he got stuck with the King gimmick. But it was a good gimmick, in my humble opinion. He still had club quality matches with Hulk Hogan in 1987. Eventually became a manager in WCW with Lex Luger and Vader. He retired in 1995 due to a car accident. And in 2004, Harley, Harley Race got inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Number 13 on this list of the greatest professional wrestling heels of all time. It's time! It's time! It's, it's, Vader time! Vader was a great heel in Japan and in WCW. Many times he won the WCW world title. Had feuds with Sting, Cactus Jack, Hulk Hogan, the... Boss slash guardian an angel, and Vader was a super heavyweight, and he, you know he attacked people. When he came to the WWE, he t attacked Gorilla Monsoon, but that was the highlight of his WWE career as a heel. He should be in the WWE WWE Hall of Fame. Number twelve on this list of the greatest professional wrestling heels of all time: Hollywood Hulk Hogan. That's right, Hogan's on this list. When he turned heel and joined the NWA. In Oh, in 1996, the fans were booing like Hogan like crazy. And he played the heel well pretty good for, for a few years. And he, and, and he just said, stick it. And, you know, his heel mic work was awesome. But he played the chick, also a little bit of a chicken shit heel as well. 2005 WWE Hall of Famer. And number 11 on this list of the greatest professional wrestling heels of all time to end this list right now. Ole Anderson. Ole Anderson was part of the Minnesota Wrecking Crew with his brother Gene. He wrestled in Mid Atlantic and Florida at Georgia Championship Wrestling, where he was part owner. And he did one of the most heel ish acts ever by suckering Dusty Rhodes into a tag team match in the Omni in a steel cage against the Assassins. And Ole Anderson turned on Dusty Rhodes. Eventually, Ole Anderson became the book of WCW, part of the four the original Four Horsemen. He'll never go into the WWE Hall of Fame because he does not like Vince McMahon. And that's about it on this. I'll be back in a few minutes for number ele number ten through number one. And the third and final video blog of the night will be about Joe Gibbs. Keep calm, everybody. I'm a Julie Bennett guy. Molly Rosebud of WCCO Rocks and has nice legs. Elizabeth Art so so stunning. She's the best. Amy Swensey Rocks and in the words of Sean Lucia, get out. Seven more days. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google Plus. Questions, comments, concerns, shout outs, plugs. And I want the questions, please, for the next Ask Rich question and answer video blog. It's coming in seven more days. So I have a few questions right now, but more than ever.